Welcome back to another video with the Ford Courier. I'm going to do the valve lash adjustment today. As you can hear, there's quite a bit of noise coming from the top end. That's the rocker arms clacking on the uh, cam. So here's the only tools I really need to do this job. It's, it's routine maintenance. It's not that hard. Uh, it's a little more tedious than anything. What you hear there is a nasty bit of rattling, and that's not, not anything too bad. It's just the top end, those rocker arms hitting the cam every time it comes around. There's too big of a gap there. Uh, so it, it clacks and rattles. First step is to let the engine get up to temperature because all the measurement specs are for a warm engine. So that's what's going on right now. Yeah, it's really not a pleasant sound, is it? Next, I'm going to take off the air intake pipes. These pull intake from around the exhaust to heat it up on a cold day, which I don't really have any of, but that's what it's there for. And that's the uh, crankcase vent that goes back into the carburetor. That's another vent. I don't know what it does, but it's there, so uh, that's where it's going. A lot of this stuff is just simple disassembly and reassembly, so this part is just, you know, taking things off. Next is to remove a couple cable guides for the throttle and choke cables. They're bolted down at the top of the engine for some reason, so uh, yeah, they come off. And instead of taking them all the way off, I'm just going to fold them back and out of the way there. Next we're ready to take off the crankcase cover. It's just a matter of removing six bolts around the perimeter and uh, lifting it up. In fact, if you haven't done that to your car, I recommend it. It's a cool way to take a look at your engine and see what it looks like up close and personal. Off she goes. Eventually. Off comes the hoop juped gasket. They call this tough cork, but uh, I don't know why. It had a metal ribbon in the middle, but all that really did is separate from the cork, and there you see it. Not so tough now, are you? To be fair, it's probably my fault from reassembly, but. Next, I'm taking off the spark plugs. It's not strictly necessary, but it sure makes it a lot easier. And that's satisfying. With them in the cylinder when they reach top dead center, since everything's closed, they really want to back up or roll forward a bit. With the spark plugs out, all that built up pressure just comes out the hole that she just unbolted. And of course the real obnoxious bit is taking the spark plugs out now that the exhaust manifold's hot like it needs to be. That's why I'm using that impact extension. Now it's not strictly necessary unless you're using big impact guns like I am here. Now for uh, the feature show. First step is just to remove the locking nut. It's basically a screw with a nut that locks it down and that's really all it is to it. Next I'm sticking that feeler gauge in. I picked out the right spec for this engine on the cam side because it's an asymmetrical lever so you either have to measure it at the lifter side or the cam side and you got to get the right measurement for it. So basically I'm sticking it in there and tightening down that lever just until it can barely fit in and out without too much resistance. That's how I know it's at the right setting. Next I'm coming around to lock it down. And this is the tedious part. Because as you turn that bolt, it has the tendency of giving an extra little twist to that screw. And you can see now that feeler gauge doesn't fit. So you can't leave it like that. You could really damage the engine. you got to back it off again, reset it to just the right setting, and then kind of take a mental snapshot of where that screwdriver's position is. So that when you tighten it, you aim for that position. So there you see I just gave it a slight counter twist so that when I give it that final crank down, it pulls it back into spec and it's perfect now. And you'll see through this time lapse there's quite a few readjustments being made because it, it's just it's a tedious task. Every time you tighten down that lock nut it wants to twist the, the set pin a little bit. 
there you see me reaching and turning the, the starter motor again with the spark plugs out the engine just spins pretty freely you, you can do anything I mean you can you can put a big uh, crescent wrench on the end of the crankshaft or, or whatever you want to turn the engine over and get the next cylinder top dead center I just choose to use the starter motor because it's bolted right to the engine and does the job for me and around you go Getting it too loose isn't the worst thing ever. I mean, really, really too loose, you you really are, you know, you're hammering those pieces of metal together and that's no good, especially in an engine like this where it doesn't actually have like a roller or a tappet or anything. It's just literally the rocker arm slides against the cam as it comes around. So you don't want too much of a gap there, but you'll, you'll hear it if you get that bad. But you also don't want it too tight. If you get it too tight when the engine gets to full operating temperature, which it's it's supposed to be for this measurement, but you know, every now and then it'll run a little too hot. If you get it too tight, it won't fit, and that's bad. It'll really break the engine. Now I'm just going around double checking, locking down everything. Double checking it one more time, and you can see I think cylinder four here needed a slight readjustment. Uh, you know. Take the time to do it while you've got it all apart. There's no points in winning this race, but if you screw up an old engine, it's it's hard to replace, so try not to do that. After double checking it all once more around, getting everything just right, it's time to reassemble, which means taking apart the valve cover. Because my gasket kit came with a, uh, a baffle gasket, which I figured hey, I might as well put it in. This baffle gasket given the condition of the valve cover gasket probably could use some uh, renewal so it's just a matter of taking a bunch of screws off on that inside plate and then popping it up that's another one of those satisfying moments isn't that the annoying bit is scraping off all the burnt on gasket from both sides. That's where the uh, aforementioned gasket scraper comes in real handy. Um, I'm sure there's a proper way of doing it, so don't do that, but eh. There goes the new one in. As you can see, that, uh, that baffle is actually really clean, which is good. If you see a lot of soot or oil in there, that means you're getting blow by. Because the exhaust gases are supposed to be going out the exhaust, not up into the crankcase. A little bit of pressure is normal. And that's also why all that baffling is in there. Same with oil. I mean, oil does splash around in there, but that baffling is really supposed to let the oil drain down and the air come out. I'm just putting the end plugs in. I, I'm sure someone who's an engine builder can tell you why those exist. To me, it seems like they could just make it all flush with the gasket, so you don't need them, but in they go. I guess it makes it easier to turn the engine over. That's probably the excuse. Uh, or, or remove the cam. Something like that. New gasket in. Valve cover back over it. And this time I'm being very careful not to pinch it down in one corner. Because I think, uh, you know, as much as I was ripping on the gasket before, I think the real problem was that I uh, tightened it down and pinched that corner a little bit too much. So I'm just making sure the gasket's seated properly and then putting the bolts back on. And you want to do it just like any other gasket. You go kind of like you're drawing a star, not like you're drawing a circle. So, you know, different corners kind of alternate around. It's not really that critical with this one. I mean, this gasket doesn't take any load or anything like that, but why not? And uh, yeah, back in go the spark plugs and all the stuff on the top of the engine back in. Now, if I was watching the disassembly video when I did this, I probably wouldn't have made the mistake I just made because the uh, throttle cable guide screws on underneath that intake pipe. So all that stuff I just did is coming back off in about five seconds. But choke cable works, so that's fun. Let's get that one down while we can. And we take it all off again. Nobody's looking right. Um, put that one back on and then re-reassemble that part. Probably won't make that mistake next time. This is what I said last time I did this job. That's the fuel pump. Clicking away.
and as you can hear it's a lot quieter at the front end that fuel pumps probably the next thing I need to change but thanks for watching stay tuned